What is up everyone? It is Spada del Signore. God bless you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to be reviewing the debate between Jake the Muslim metaphysician and Dr. Khalil Andani. This debate was between Jake's position, the Athari creed, and Dr. Khalil Andani was uh, supporting like an Islamic philosophical position. Specifically, he is Ismaili, which is a sect of the, the Shia. And so it was a debate between those, those different positions. Now, I, before this debate, was most familiar with the Ethery Creed because that's what I've had to study when, because all the Muslims I debate practically are Ethery's. So an easy way to think of it would be Ethery's are anthropomorphists. And then the other side, the Asheri's, uh, the Khalil would say they're anthropomorphists too, but uh, the the atheries affirm the meaning of saying God has a hand, like God does stuff with his hands and he sees with his eyes, speaks, you know, with his mouth, things like that. Whereas the Asheris would say, oh no, they would give it a tawil, like a uh, some kind of like metaphorical meaning. So that is what I studied mostly, and it, even. Uh, one thing before I get into it, I noticed a lot of the same things that Khalil used against Jake were things that I used in my debate against Faisal. And uh, it's a little bit hard for them to, to defend some of the things when you really get down to the, to the nitty gritty. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go. I watched the entire debate yesterday, so I have notes too that I took, but it's basically just going to be a way for you where you don't have to watch a two hour and 27 minute video. Although I would suggest it if you have the time, but I'm just going to go through what I thought, you know, just a summary. Anyway, so Jake went first. So here he showed us what the Athari creed is. So he affirms the text of the Quran and the Sunnah with their apparent meanings, affirm the attributes of Allah. We do not believe Allah has body parts. So the big thing is that the Atheris will say, yes, God has a hands, he has eyes, he has feet, he has a loin, he has, uh, eyes. I'm trying to think of anything, a shin, but they, those aren't body parts, even though they do stuff like body parts, like the hand, Allah's hand, his yed, grabs things, picks it up and makes stuff. It also says we do not liken Allah to his creation. So even though... They say Allah does these stuff, or does these things, I'm sorry. Uh, like, for example, when he descends in the last third of the night, they said you, the apparent meaning of descend is to come down. But they say, no, 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 we can't liken that. It's in a way that befits his majesty, right? So, And then the Atari Creed also says they seek to affirm the creed of the early generations. Now, this is a strong point. This is what I'm going to say to Jake. I really do believe that the early Muslims believed the Atari creed aka the the sahaba the the tabi'in the tabi'in and all of them i i really do think that they believed this because it's very obviously simple to understand it's very it's it's what you get it's it's taking the text at a face face value hyper face value <laughs> actually and you know guys i had no opinion on who I wanted to win this debate. I mean, I know Jake, I, Jake has been a little um, funny before. So I, I do kind of like seeing the Atheri Creed getting made fun of a little bit. But at the same time, I do see uh, the problem with this kind of Islamic philosophical position and how kind of crazy that is. So I did get excited too when Jake was kind of going after um, some of the ridiculousness of that position <laughs> anyway so we'll continue on so anyway jake basically just explained what the what the athari creed is uh he included some stuff from some sources about you know allah making adam with his two oh sorry with his two hands things like that he quoted surah ikhlas and there say allah is one I'll depend on him. He begets not, nor is he begotten. So, pretty much. Um, he also said he is not encompassed by space, which is interesting. 
because uh, this is something that Khalil will pull out later in the debate about, well, you know, where's uh, Allah? He's above the throne. And is the throne above the lowest heaven? Yes. And does Allah uh, go to the lowest heaven? Yes, but without leaving the throne. But he's so, so he's not encompassed by space. So Khalil kind of goes after him on that. So he brings these these quotes from the Quran that, that suggest at least from uh, Jake's perspective that Allah has uh, these these attributes. Uh, the other thing, and guys, I'm really not a, philo a philosopher, so a lot of this stuff kind of went way over my head. So Jake is basically going after Khalil, saying uh, that the necessary being and the intellect are not an Islamic, an Islamically tenable position. So he basically says Khalil's position is Khalil believes that God made one thing, the internal, the eternal intellect, and that intellect uh, made another thing, and then that thing. So it's like an emanation almost, and that Allah really only made one thing. So so Jake is kind of telling him that that's not consistent with Islamic. Uh, creed and then he goes into this whole kind of like quote bombing thing about trying to show a contradiction between Khalil's position because there's a philosophical and there's a, like philosophia philosophia I think um philosophy and also the his Ismaili beliefs so he basically quote bombed a bunch of uh stuff and I'm not saying it's it's wrong I mean He's just, I guess, trying to show the inconsistency. So he keeps showing that the Ismaili theologians, you have these, but the Adani contradicts them, supposedly. So he just gives a bunch of different quotes. So on all sorts of philosophical things about Allah's creation, which I, I did think it's kind of crazy for Khalil to believe that God only does one thing, and that one thing is just creating the eternal intellect, nothing else. So I I feel like Jake's position was much more straightforward and not convoluted. So and the summary of his open statement opening statement was Khalil's contradictory theology. Is he still Ismaili? As the Allah, and the other thing was, Jake was saying that Khalil's position requires you to deny the apparent meaning of the names, like creator, all knowing, all powerful. So, so like Badi, Ali, and Qadir, things like that. Can Khalil prove God exists? Because he brought some quotes about Ismailis or Islamic philosophers can't establish God's existence by reason. And this was another thing that he brought up based on the quotes he brought. He was saying that anyone who believes in the apparent meaning of Allah being creator or all knowing or all powerful is committing kufr and shirk, which is disbelief. And then shirk is, is applying partners to God. So that was Jake's opening statement. Now going to Khalil's opening statement, he basically says why he's doing this debate because he felt that uh, he was trashed in that clubhouse by Jake. So basically here, it's a nice, it's a really nice visual for, for us to look at. So if we look first to what Khalil believes, Khalil believes that Allah is the absolute simple reality. The only thing Allah does, he eternally creates this, this pen, the, uh, qalam, uh, the first intellect, also known as the light of Muhammad or Nur Muhammad. So he gets these words from some of the Shia tradition. I don't know if the Sunni tradition also has this light of Muhammad, Nur Muhammad. Anyway, so Allah creates the pen. The pen emanates or causes the tablet. And then the tablet produces everything else. So it's it's like an eternal emanation kind of thing going on. In a way, it almost seems like how in Christianity we have the belief of God eternally 
begetting, eternally generating Jesus, the word son of God. So it reminds me of that a little bit. And I think you would actually find more of a support for this kind of belief from the Bible than the Quran, definitely. But anyway, uh, because in our belief, it's just the father, you know, begets the son eternally without ca without like causing um, it to exist in like a way where the word has always existed, just like God has always existed. So it's not like a temporal causation, but it is in one direction. Like the son doesn't cause the father to exist. The father causes the son, son and the father causes the spirit to exist. So that is Khalil's position that Allah isn't actually the direct creator of us. It's through a chain of his emanations that we are created. Now, he, and he shows Jake's position as the Athenians believe that Allah has an essence and he also has these attributes that are distinct from each other because they don't overlap. Like, for example, Allah's two feet can't be his two hands. His two fingers can't be his few eyes. His rising can't be the same as his knowledge, so on and so forth. So he basically, Khalil's point is that he's saying that the Etheri God is basically a composite being with multiple entities inside of it, uncreated. So all of these different attributes, they don't overlap. Therefore, they can't be uh, eternal because they're, they're limited in some way. So therefore, they can't be... Uh, it can't be God is basically what he's saying. So that was Khalil's main point. He goes into talking about the different schools of Neoplatonism, the the word philosopher. So that's how you say it, philosopher. Sorry. And so I didn't know. I, Hikman just means the judgment. I thought like Hokum is government. So anyway, but that was interesting to me. I These it's names fun. really, I don't really know any of these names. Um, I've heard about uh, Avicenna before. So, and the one thing that Khalil does as well, he produces these 10 arguments uh, to try to debunk the Atheri creed, but also to argue for his Islamic philosophy position. So, I'm just going to go through each of them with you guys. So, uh, let me see. So, I, I'll, I'll get into them, guys. I won't, like, do them right right here. So the thing that Khalil says is Tawheed has to be rational. So it has to agree with Aqal, which is your like brains. And it has to agree with Revelation or the Naqal. So that's the Quran. Listen. And since Khalil is a Shia, he believes that the Ahl Bayt, which is the house of Muhammad, it literally means people of the house. So they have the correct interpretation and he produces this hadith which actually is accepted by sunnis as well so um the two weighty things is called the th the um uh thalqain i think or thalqain i have to look this up i'm going to be mad um but the two weighty thalqain yeah thalqain so the two weighty things kitab allah wa ahl bayti so the book of god and my Ahl Bayt, the people of my house. The two of them shall never separate until they return to me at the paradisal pool. So, and this is supposedly mutawatir. So, in a way, I can see how Khalil's worldview works. I know they'll disagree definitely on if the Shia position is correct, or if, and Khalil would probably say the Sunni position because the the Sahaba aren't the Ahl Bayt, so they cannot have the right interpretation. So there's a lot of that. This that's the one thing about Islamic tradition, and I know the Shia tradition is written down much, much later, but you still have in these Sunni sources these kind of inklings of these kind of Shia tendencies in a way. So it's just very divided and hard to understand. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so his first point is that the Hanbali, so Ahmed ibn Hanbal is the founder of this, the one of the four schools. He is the latest one as well. So 
he basically brings these quotes saying, you can't do any kind of debate or any kind of logical argumentation that it, it's haram. His second point is that Ahmed ibn Hanbal's vision of Allah is anthropomorphic, talking about, um, and I actually, I was surprised because he actually used this, this hadith, which I used in the debate with Faisal, uh, about the haqwa rahman, the loin or the back or the loincloth of the most merciful. So I was surprised that he used that because not a lot of people use that. Basically saying all the things about how Allah is referred to in the Athari creed or the Hanbali creed as anthropomorphic, doing stuff, moves, laughs, talks, you know, touches, puts his foot and stuff. So that's basically what he was saying. So next thing that he talks about. Oh, and also, I've seen that this hadith is not true uh, or is not authentic about the one about the curly, the sheb. It's the hadith about the sheb with the curly hair. So, in a red garment. So, and I did read a book. It was about anthropomorphism in Islam. It did say the Hanbalis did narrate this a lot. But I do see a lot of modern ones saying that that's not authentic. Even even some, I watched this Q&A one time. And this, this Sufi question to Hanbali Sheikh and said uh, that you believe in a, a beardless, curly-haired Allah. And he said... Uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal qala. <laughs> Ahmed ibn Hanbal said, Whoever says that Allah is a Sheb with uh, Sheb is like a young man with uh, curly hair is a kafir so, or something like that. But anyway, so that was number two. Number three is we basically tried to show that you can't hold either position that if you say that. Allah has these apparent meanings of his eyes, his hands, his rising, his laughing, what have you, it's going to end up being a haram. If you do the ta'wil, which is the you know, like metaphorical stuff, that is going to be haram as well. So this, this quote, and I think this is actually pronounced Ibn Quvayma. Uh, instead of uh, Ibn Qudama, it's Quvayma. Think. Whatever is likewise authentically transmitted and justly narrated, we believe in it and we do not reject it and we do not negate it and do not interpret it with a tawil that opposes its apparent meaning. We do not compare it to the attributes of the creation, but the apparent meaning inherently links Allah to his creation. Because if you descend, we can descend. What else does it mean? If Allah grabs stuff with his yet. Yeah, uh, Yadi, or how do you say? I know, yeah, see, I, I have this Egyptian Arabic in my head. So in Egyptian Arabic, hand is Eid. And then to say hands is a Yadi. So that is that. And I forget what it is in Pusha. But anyway, if Allah's hand grabs stuff and our hand grabs stuff, that means he's like us. That means he's linked to the creation. So you can't hold either view is basically what Khalil is saying, which, which I would agree with 100%. Um, so let's see. Now, this one is basically saying that the logical problem is that Allah can't say stuff that makes no sense. Because the grammarian said that speech is a connected expression that's intentionally meaningful. Mufid bil wad. Wad. I don't know if that's wad or wad. So it's basically saying that if the verse lacks meaning, it's not really speech and therefore it cannot be kalam Allah, right? So it's basically trying to say that it can't be gibberish. We have no need to know the meaning which God intended by his attributes. So um, that was number four. Number five is that it appeals to mystery. So he basically says, Jake, you should stop debating the Christians because you believe in mystery. And you say, Allah descends the lowest heaven, he puts his foot in hell, he um, you know, does stuff with his hands, grab by the womb, by his, by his loin. Uh, you just need to stop debating the Christians because it's a mystery to you. Uh, he keeps going with this divine simplicity. So he basically uses this um, 
belief that the word ahad and samad somehow show that Allah is like completely simple, completely independent, absolutely one without internal plurality. So then he gives some, uh, gives a quote and then talks about the distinct attributes make him multiple. They don't make him ahad. So that is point six. Point seven, he says that the Athari creed is Trinitarian, which I would actually, you know, believe that Allah has these distinct, uh, the Athari persuasion has these distinct attributes that don't overlap. Like, for example, Christians would say, we believe uh, in the Father and the Son and the Spirit. They're all eternal, but the Son is not the Father, the Father is not the Spirit, the Son is not the Spirit. So we believe in, in that totally. So what Khalil is saying is that it's Trinitarian, not Quranic. So, and the eighth thing, you have, I guess, this, this ontological problem where kind of like, as I was saying before, the attributes of God are not identical to him and not other than him. So it's like saying, I don't speak Italian, but I... It's like I speak Italian, but I don't speak Italian. Or, or I'm, I'm like, I'm not Spada, but I am small. Like, it just doesn't make, make sense because the attributes are identical to him. Like, is God's hand identical to him or are they not? Because if they, they are identical to him, then that means that that hand is God, is like God in the sense of the, the hand is not the eyes, but yet they're both uh, ontologically God, you you then is what Khalil says, you, you'll get polytheism. But um, there we go. And so for nine, the divine simplicity, so finite attributes, arbitrary limits. So by, by basically saying what he says, if Allah has only Yadain, two hands, that limits him to some arbitrary number that therefore means he's not like almighty or he's not, he's not really Ase or he's not really uh the ground for all things. So God is infinite, unlimited according to all Muslims. Each divine attribute differs from other attributes. Every divine attribute is finite and delimited. Athri Creed says that God possesses multiple distinct finite limited attributes. So like I said about God having two hands, two fingers. Uh, so and the quote, therefore the infinity of God entails that he is not composed of really distinct attributes. If God be infinite, then he can have no parts in him. If he had, they must be finite or infinite. Finite parts can never make up an infinite being. Infinite parts, they can't be because in every part would be equal to the whole as infinite as the whole, which is contradictory. So that is, it's a little bit over my head a little bit. The first part I get, the infinite parts cannot be because then every part would be equal to the whole. Oh, it's basically saying like, if, if the hand is infinite, it's the same thing as all of Allah because it's it's infinite. Or the, the eye of Allah is this, because if it's infinite, it's the same as all of them, which is, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so, and then the final one that he brings about, oh wait, is it's part two. So basically talking about the names and the attributes that Basically, Khalil's position is to say that the attributes just mean he's like the giver of those things. That Allah isn't all powerful, he's the giver of power. He's the giver of knowledge, life, compassion, justice. Okay. And then his last point is that he quotes from the Islamic sources about how God created. So he creates the pen directly, the pen creates the tablet, then the tablet creates everything. So, and then he wants Jake to answer those those all 10 of those which is i get it is kind of like a machine gun tactic in a way so i understand what he's trying to do he's trying to show the ridiculous ridiculousness of the athari position so basically guys now moving into jake's first rebuttal jake's first rebuttal is basically kind of him talking about why Khalil's position is like contradictory to the sources he uses and he's pulling these sources again. I don't know anything about Islamic philosophical text or, or uh, I don't, I don't even know Ibn Sina. I know Ibn Sina, but, um, 
None of them, I know. So basically, what Jake's main point is, guys, can you realistically arrive at Khalil's position from just the plain reading of the Quran and plain reading of the Sunnah? The answer is no. You know, so I do give Jake that his position is the more, I feel like, in line with the scripture and the revelation. But again, Khalil would just say, well, you know, your your source of uh, revelation other than the Quran is the, the Sunnah, which is not correct because it's not from the Ahlul Bayt, it's not from it's not from Imam Ali or, or Al Hassan or Al Hussein or uh, Imam Al Sadiq or all of those Shia figures that are beloved, which do teach these Neoplatonist kind of beliefs. So basically, though, Khalil is saying that. Guys, if you are taking Khalil's perspective, you have to then believe that all of the Ummah, all of the Muslims are committing shirk. That they're they're basically um, believing in a polytheistic God. And they're not really believing in Allah and His oneness. So that was Jake's basic rebuttal. Th these were only 10 minute rebuttals and he didn't really have any slides or anything. So for Khalil's rebuttal, he brought these primary sources that that uh, Jake was talking about, trying to kind of show that Khalil has some kind of contradiction going on. So Khalil is, I guess he speaks Persian and Arabic. His Arabic w wasn't really that good. Like, I, I know he's telling himself, like, I've only been studying, like, super, super hard for, like, a year, but I feel like I speak better Arabic than him. And that's not like, I know he can probably read words like distinction and essence and stuff better than me, but like actually pronouncing words, I was surprised a little bit. I mean, J I mean, Jake as well. I think Jake, um, and guys, this isn't the dog people, like why don't they know Arabic and stuff, but it's just, it, it is interesting. But uh, Christians do the same thing with Greek. You know, they, they have this horrible Greek pronunciation. But anyway, so Khalil's basic point is he's trying to refute what, uh, Jake is saying and harmonize the position of the different scholars from the philosophy, Islamic philosophy and uh, the Ismailis. So Khalil is saying, yes, you can actually prove God's existence through rational argument. Gives all these quotes. And the only other thing that I can think of is that Khalil did not really answer about uh, everyone committing shirk. He eventually does in the uh, in, in later in the debate, he says it's not like major shirk, so they'll still like be, you know, forgiven and stuff. And they're still Muslims, but, you know, it is a problem. And so one thing I did like about Khalil, he did, for the most part, I felt like he really honestly answered Jake's questions. So he answered the four main questions that Jake proposed him. Like I said, that philosophy is incompatible with philosophy, that Khalil's view contradicts the Quran, the names of God. Uh that Khalil's view contradicts reason, uh, negative theology. I don't think I really touched on that one. See, I don't even understand what negative theology means. I think it maybe means like you can't arrive at knowing God unless you negate what he is not. So, uh, taqlid means you're basically like following, like you're, you're basically assuming the position of a teacher or, um, uh, authority. So, for example, Khalil's taqlid is that he believes in imama. He believes in the 12 I infallible uh, imams. I, I think he's a 12-er. If not, I well, he's not. He's not a 12-er. He's, a, he's, a, um, uh, he's Ismaili, so I think they're a little bit different. But anyway, definitely Ali, uh, Al-Hassan, Hussein, uh, Imam al-Sadiq, he believes in them, and he like just copies their position. That's what taqlid means. And, you know, from Khalil's position, he's just saying, you know, this the Islamic position. This is revelation. This is what Muhammad said to follow the Book of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt. Ali and Hassan and Hussein and Imam al-Sadiq, they're all from the Ahlul Bayt. Therefore, I follow them. This is what they taught. But I don't know if the, the, the Shia can necessarily show from early sources that they did believe this. Although, like I said, in the Sunni sources, you do see kind of this, this uh, little Shia tendency to follow Muhammad, Muhammad's household. So that was basically all that I had written down of interest for uh, Khalil's rebuttal. 
and he did bring up again that the Atheri creed and Hembalism, you can't use logical argumentation. And he brought some quotes that it is uh, Haram. So let me just uh, see if I can find it here, guys. Um, I don't know if I don't know if it's in here. Let me see. Because the next thing is going to be the cross examination. I'm just trying to. Uh, let's see. This so five necessities. I'm uh, this stuff is like so over my head. <laughs> At least I'm being honest about it, you know. Um, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention Dr. Khalil believes in this kind of that, uh, the way that God doesn't have free will in the sense that he everything that he does couldn't have been any other way. So, like, creation became necessary. Right, so that Allah like literally does one thing and he couldn't have done anything else, which I feel is really that's hard to, to swallow as someone believing in God that God couldn't have done so if he has a will, he's able to to do stuff. Cause I mean it's so it's it's very hard for somebody to kind of believe that that Allah because the God of Khalil is very like not present in people's lives completely disengaged from everybody that's at least what it seems because he only does one thing and that's create the eternal intellect of a pen so i'm trying to see if there's anything of note divine simplicity besides the attributes uh khalil also brings up this thing about that Breathing should be a uh, attribute of God uh, or blowing God's spirit. So all this stuff. So Jay, so he said, Jake must from the God's real distinct attributes of anger, pleasure, forgetting soul, beautiful form, young man, form, loin, coming down, feet, two hands. So I do think that Jake's position is the most tenable, but obviously I do think that you encounter a lot of problems because I feel like our theology, Christian theology, it kind of combines the simplicity of Jake's position and just the what the text says with you know the philosophical rigor. I would say the Christian position is most in line with kind of like a Ashari position that you don't really believe God has eyes and hands and stuff, but it's just a way that he uses to communicate with us about what he's able to do um, let's see so he's also Khalil also mentions that God is able to uh, help other people are able to kind of share his attributes so Allah is the only God but Muhammad guides and gives all these different different uh, examples of that. Now, going on to the cross examination. So Jake asked Khalil first, his panel of questions. So the one thing I will say is Khalil did seem very comfortable during the cross examination with Jake's questions. Jake kept asking a bunch of different questions, and he didn't really push too much. Uh, Khalil obviously is very well well versed in philosophy. Yeah, Jake is too. But Khalil was able to really kind of disarm each question. And Jake wasn't really able to push further to like get him to uh, contradict himself. The one thing I did like that Jake asked him, he said, if creation didn't exist, would God not exist? And so that really struck me as, you know, that's a really good point. Like, because is God dependent on his creation or is he independent? So um, Khalil's basically, uh, that was the only thing he kind of, I felt that he didn't really answer very well. He was basically saying like, well, because in his position, his position, that's not even possible. It's impossible. So for him, it's like, uh, well, theoretically, no, but. You know, so that was kind of a gotcha moment, I guess, 
for for Jake for Khalil. Now moving on to Khalil's uh, cross examination with Jake. I felt like Khalil was really Khalil was. I was surprised he was very aggressive, very. Uh, I don't want to say like mean, but like he just was really trying to pin him down. So. Basically, Khalil kept asking him questions on the attributes, the sifat of, of Allah, say, and basically was saying that he was getting Jake on this line of, now, are Allah's attributes like his hand, his eyes, are, is, are those distinct from his essence? And uh, Jake really wasn't trying to answer those questions in a, a straightforward way. Like, it, it did, see, at least from my view, it did seem like he was kind of, not wanting to to answer in a way he kept asking you know clarifying questions and so basically what Khalil ends up getting is that um Jake finally does say that um the attributes are distinct from his es essence so that Khalil says well so now you believe in a conglomerate of different entities you know because they're you know that they're all eternal but so basically, that was his his gist. Khalil also pulls out this Muhammad hijab quote because Jake is saying that the position of believing that God only has could have done one thing, basically in a way that God doesn't have free will, um, was un-Islamic. But Khalil pulls out this quote of Muhammad hijab, who Jake works with, uh, saying the exact same thing that Khalil says basically about God couldn't have done things any differently can be any other way so and the other thing that Khalil asked Jake was there's this hadith where Muhammad asks a slave girl you know, where um, where is Allah and she points up to the sky so Khalil asks him to do it and he didn't do it for a long time and so he finally did do it but he was saying so is Allah uh, above the the arsh the throne Okay, is the throne above the lowest heaven? Okay, is um, does he descend below where the throne is? And he's like, no, he doesn't leave it. So basically, Khalil's point is showing that the Athabi position is almost, in a way, a Trinitarian. That these attributes of Allah don't overlap. Therefore, they're distinct from each other. Therefore, you have compart compartments or parts of God. And Jake's point was, but look at me. I have all these different attributes, but I'm still one person. And I think that is the point that Khalil is trying to make, that if you say that about God, it's making him in our, our image in a way, which I do believe that we are made in the image of God in a way. Obviously, I don't think God has like a hand that he grab stuff with I don't understand God's nature I know he can do stuff and enter into creation and do stuff I don't know how it's a mystery like I believe me and Jake agree on yeah Jake it's a mystery but Khalil is basically saying that it's basically a Trinitarian position in a way so although I do think that Khalil's position completely contradicts the Quran because the God of the Quran you know, is involved in people's lives, cares about them, you know, especially in the Hadith, the Hadith, Allah creates lots of things other than the pen, right? So, I don't know, guys, it's, so, it was an interesting debate. Would I say there was a clear winner? I really don't. I, I would say Khalil probably had more gotcha moments, but... Being his position, I, I do see how Khalil's position is just completely divorced from the the text and the corpus. So I believe Jake's position is more true to the text and the position. From a debate, the argument perspective, I did think that Khalil was a little bit stronger in kind of causing Jake to stumble a little bit but although i don't i don't think jake did did horrible in the debate but guys i just hope this shows you that ethery creed really is impossible to uphold without 
having some kind of doubt come to you or some kind of uh some shek is the word in arabic so anyway but I, I did enjoy the debate i thought it was good i did watch it like 1.5 speed because i don't want to spend two and a half hours listening to this but anyway that was basically it for this review guys if you have any questions or anything please feel free to comment and so guys as a christian i'm obviously trying to share the gospel with people i don't just study islam all day just so i can know about a lot about islam i'm trying to show jesus to people the real word of god you know so the only reason i learned this stuff is so that i can have an in with the muslims and be able to speak you know with them so with the athari i would say you know hey you believe that allah has uh his his spirit or his breathing or speech and that's not that's the same way i believe in uh, Jesus being the word of God and the Quran calls him uh, Kalimat Allah and all this stuff. Now Khalil, I would talk about, hey, you believe that God eternally kind of generates these things. Hey, look, that that's the word of God. Look at what it says in John 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You know, so I'm just learning this stuff so that I can get in and best witness to these people. So... Anyway, that's it, guys. God bless you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spada del Signore. Out.